Good evening, everyone. This is such a pleasure to see a full house for a full band, and we are so delighted that you are here to join us tonight. Tonight, we celebrate the 60th anniversary of the band that began in 1962, 60 years ago, at the Presbyterian home. Today is May 10th. That is 60 years ago. We celebrate this wonderful occasion and we will open our program with three beautiful hymns. Tonight, you're going to hear pieces that we have enjoyed playing for these last couple years, well, maybe 11 years, but you're going to hear about the instruments that were played 60 years ago. You will hear these instruments talked about of 60 years ago. We'll start with Carolyn. The Presbyterian home had been in operation for 10 years and there was a need for residents to have an opportunity for self-expression in music and in humor and in cooperative exuberance. In 1962, Mrs. Sarah McNatt got a group of residents together for a fun session with a piano, a pot lid, some hardwood sticks, combs with tissue paper, sink stoppers, saw blades, a bass drum, bells and xylophones, and bottles filled with water. You'll hear some of these now in our next number, 76 Trombones.
Mrs. Judy Barksdale, who had been employed in 1962, agreed to help organize and lead the group. Some of the early instruments were quite intriguing. In the brass section, trombones were made from short lengths of bamboo fishing poles with wooden spools representing the vials. Then the fishing pole body was replaced with a screen door closing gadget and we had a trombone. <laughs> a Cadillac hubcap served as a symbol. <laughs> now we use a pot lid from the kitchen. <laughs> Our next number is Over the Rainbow from The Wizard of Oz. This number was, this, this song was voted the number one song of the last century by the American Film Institute. of melodious bells for Savage for a long reed organ and had a range of two octaves and included sharps and flats. Scrap steel pipes played by capable hands gave a captivation performance on many occasions. The pipes were remade with copper tubing by Dr. Neil Sheffield, a resident here at River Landing. The French horn was contrived by coiling a discarded vacuum cleaner hose and a large funnel as a finishing touch. An assembly of masonry trowels of various sizes hanging from a rack when struck with a small mallet gave a fascination chime like sounds. Now we're later going to hear Linda play on the uh, uh, trowels. <laughs> Thank you. 
can you believe that she hits a moving target? <laughs> and when she doesn't have a note, she just thinks that note and keeps it going on. Linda, it's amazing what you can do, girl. The only string instrument was a bass fiddle made by a hoe handle, a strong string, and a wash tub. We call it a gut bucket. Other instruments were circular saw blades, tambourines, and a crystal goblet. A glockenspiel was made by attaching three metal sink strainers to a wooden slat. A plastic blue bottle with water and whistle attached were called the bluebird, bird-like sounds. Joyce will now play this for us in The Band Played On. must be emphasized that the piano and the snare drum are the only store-bought instruments played with the ensemble so frequently sought for, out for wholesome, novel, and effervescent entertainment. We will now play one of our favorite songs, Alexander's Ragtime Band.
We used to travel, but because of, you know, that thing that starts with a C, O, B, I, D. We just have not been able to travel. But when we go somewhere and we've been before, somebody will always come up to me and say, ma'am, we really like that song about that clock. Can y'all play that song about the clock when you play today? And I said, well, you know, I, I think maybe we could. Did anybody bring the clock? Oh. <laughs> oh, Wiz, do you have it? It's under my chair. Sorry well, can you that. get it out? I don't know whether it's worth playing or not. I don't either. <laughs> okay, um, it hasn't been working in a while, so it probably needs to get wound up. Oh, gosh. Um, somebody used <laughs> to help me. Just one problem share. after the other. Yeah, well, that's the way I am. Sharon, uh, could you perhaps... Well, we'll give it a try. Give me a hand here, will you? Uh, the left hand or the right hand? <laughs> Smarty. <laughs> okay, let's do five and see if that'll make it work. Okay? Yeah. I know there's some old folks in our community that are here tonight, and you don't remember 1914, but in 1914, there was a piece called Ball in the Jack, and it was a popular song that described the movements <laughs> of very suggestive dances. In the shag slang language of the day, Ball in the Jack meant to go full speed. The saying came from the phrase from the lumberjacks and the railroad engineers when they wanted to go full throttle. Here we go, Ball in the Jack by Mr. Wiz. <laughs> Well, you've heard about the instruments that were played many years ago at the Presbyterian home and owned for 60, 60 years. But in front of you are some instruments that you have not heard. On the front row, I'm going to describe them. Here is the Xyla Pipes, P-I-P-E-S. And they were designed by resident Neil Sheffield. 
He designed them. He took the copper tubing. He cut each one to exact centimeter to make the sound of the tone that he wanted to be played and got them in this box. Then we, the, the bells that Wiz has just played, the story told to me was that they were found on the back porch of a home in High Point. And it came from some kind of something. Nobody has ever told me what it came from. <laughs> but it, they played it, but it was in a long string. It was in a long string. And if you took the magnifying glass and looked at your picture that we sent you, you'll see that the bells were there, but they were in a long, long row. How they knew where to hit what, I will never know. But they had them back then, but I don't know when they were made onto this frame. But Wiz, has, he's a master of that. And then the bottles, oh mercy. The bottles are wonderful. They're filled with water, and they have to be tuned every year. And she talks to her daughter, Cindy, every week. She said, Cindy, I just love playing the bottles. And she said, oh, Mom, you play the bottle. She said, I hit the bottle every day. <laughs> and then behind her wonderful husband is Clyde. Clyde has a gut bucket, and the bottom of it was given to us, and it replaced one that we had had before that wasn't very pretty, and it just mm, it didn't have much character. And Clyde said, I would like to play that gut bucket. And so he got some gentlemen and uh, one lady to help him redesign this gut bucket. And he fixed it to where it has a, a pole and a thing on the top that he puts his fingers on and he's got him a little amplifier and he just has it so good and that was his a gut bucket. Okay, on the second row are tambourines. And then we have a clarinet it looks like a real clarinet. It really, really does. It was made by a man that was in the band, and he made it for his wife. They're both passed on, but we have that wonderful instrument we call a clarinet, although it's just a stick of wood, you know. And then we have an English horn. It doesn't look like an English horn, but that's what we call it. <laughs> and then we have trumpets, and we have a slide trumpet, and we have a French horn made by a tube of a vacuum cleaner. And while I am talking about that instrument, Ed Shiflett came and he is substituting for Bill Moet, who is ill right now, and he and Jackie aren't here. And so Kay Heflin has filled in for Jackie and Ed has filled in for the Moets. And I, we do appreciate that. All right, on the stage is a goblet. That is a real goblet. It did not come from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> it's one that you get out of your cabinet when you're having company and you want to show off and you get your good stuff out. Well, that's good stuff, okay? And then we have castanets. They were made by Larry, who plays the snare drum. Then we have sink stoppers. Yes, can you believe sink stoppers? And I always say, if you have one in your sink, then you go home and you get it out and you get a teaspoon and you say, I wonder what it sounds like. <laughs> so anyway, those sing stoppers have been played ever since the band was started. And then we have another set of castanets. Then we have a washboard. She's going to tell about that other one in a minute, but she's going to show the washboard. Thank goodness we have a washboard. <laughs> then the pot lid you've already seen and heard uh, in our opening number that we had got from the kitchen. And then we have saw blades. Now, in the picture that you saw of our advertisement, you can see those saw blades right there on the front row. All right, on the back row, we have some special sticks. Bill... Hold them up. Can you hold it for just a minute? These sticks were made for a man by the name of Stan Cross. And he had to retire when he was 96. And he did it very gracefully. And he said, Rachel, I want you to keep the sticks in the band. And I said, oh, Stan, that would be wonderful. He said, but 
my family's coming at Thanksgiving, and I'd like to show them to them. I said, you got it. I said, I'll bring the sticks and put them on your shelf, and you can show them to your family, and then when you get through, you can come and put them on my shelf. So that's what we did. Well, this last one, we only played, he, I let Bill play these when we have company such as you. He normally just plays regular sticks that were also made for Stan. But if you notice, the one on the right-hand side has, has one, one piece of wood that was cut out to where that has that little funnel part on the top. Play it, Bill, it's so nice. Isn't that a nice little sound? And then, then we have, gosh, hold them up there. Play them. They're our maracas but they're really the floaters from the back of our commode. <laughs> we had to purchase, no, next is the cheese box. This is the first drum that the band had at the Presbyterian home. It got so dilapidated, and Dennis said, Rachel, I, if you'll give me permission, I'll, I'll redo that. And so he just fixed that drum up and did it wonderful. Well, he did such a good job. He said, you know, Rachel, he said, we need a marquee. I said, what's a marquee? He said, well, it's a sign. He said, oh, you see dance bands and all company, they have a marquee that says who they are. And so I said, well, okay, you know, whatever, Dennis. You. So he said, well, with your permission, I'm going to do it. I said, keep, keep the expenses because we do get a little money every now and then when we go away to play, and we can cover the cost of this. So Dennis drew this up, and it's sitting here in front of us, and we are so proud of our River Landing Band. We're so proud of it. Thank you, Dennis. Next is our stair drum. This is, I call him Luscious Larry, because no matter what I ask him to do, he says, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. <laughs> but we had to buy a snare drum. And then along the way came a big bass drum. It is so heavy, but anyway, and it had to be reconditioned several years ago, but it is just wonderful. Now we have two instruments that are fairly new to our group. One of them is some frogs. Stand up, frog girls. <laughs> Can you play us a little tune? Now that's what a, fro a frog's supposed to sound like. And when we use that in another program, we always, we always sing, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. <laughs> but it didn't go along with this program tonight. And then the other one is a tongue drum. Try to say that three times fast. A tongue drum. And it was made by the brother of uh, Sharon Burke. And it has little places cut out in the top. Play a little bit. It has a sweet little sound. And we use it at Christmas time when we play Silent Night. It is a beautiful, beautiful accompaniment to Silent Night. Now, we are so blessed to have our accompanist. Her name is Lois Ann Carter. And Lois Ann and her husband, Fred, who has just passed away, uh, Lois has been with us for several years, and she is par excellent. She is a wonderful accompanist. And the best news is, she is the newest resident to be, and she's already signed the contract. <laughs> now, you've heard about all the stuff that we play now, but I don't think I've left out anything. But now, Wiz is going to tell you about the directors that have been through the years. In the early days of the band, we rehearsed twice a week. But now, some 60 years later, we're down to one hour on Monday afternoon, and of course, during the pandemic, we didn't rehearse at all. The directors have really been the dominant force in keeping the band going and successful. The first director in 1962 was Judy Barksdale. Next was Catherine Faber from 1974 to 1975. Then Patty B. Cathy was the director from 1975 to 1986. Dorothy Hoskins became the director in 1986 and led the band until 1991. 
During those years, Virginia Fields was the accompanist. Ms. Jean Montgomery was the director for 20 years, from 1991 to 2011, with Alice McLaughlin serving as the band's accompanist. Ms. Montgomery was the director in September of 1991 when the Presbyterian Home Band won the gold medal at the North Carolina Silver Arts Performing Arts Showcase in the state finals in Raleigh. The band played selections from George Bizet's opera, Carmen, which was an audience favorite. In 2011, after 20 years, Jean Montgomery passed the baton to our current director, Mrs. Rachel Dunn, who is certainly a lovely person, as you can tell. <laughs> Threw that one in on you, Rachel. <laughs> Joanne Lease was our excellent accompanist before many years. And then Lois Carter has joined us just in the last couple of years. Our next selection is Climb Every Mountain from the Sound of Music. After the closing of the Presbyterian home and the folks moved over to River Landing and we were all here now, but they came over little bits at a time. Some came at the beginning, some came later on and some came and we're just here to enjoy life, the, the, the life that we have remaining. But we are a wonderful jigsaw puzzle that we fit every little piece into our band and they are a wonderful group to work with. We have a substitute list, and if you're interested in being a substitute, Kay and Ed were on my substitute list, and when I had these two people that were not going to be here tonight, I just called and I said, could you fill in? And they said, we'll do our best, and so we appreciate that. The time was 1940. It was a time of hardship and worry of most Americans. Kate Smith went to the famous American songwriter, Irving Berlin. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's coming up. And asked him to write a song to make Americans feel good about their country. To God bless America, which he had written 22 years before, he added a verse, which was a prayer for God Bless America. To this day, God Bless America stirs our patriotic feeling and pride in our country. And we would like to close our 60th band anniversary concert with this great song. Bill Armstrong will sing this prayer verse and then together, we will all sing God Bless America.
While the storm clouds gather Far across the sea Let us swear allegiance To a land that's free Let us all be grateful For a land so fair As we raise our voices In a solemn prayer God bless America up in the morning we feel so good that we can look at the air and feel the air and feel the spirit that is around us we have men and women that have served our country they have gone all over the world they're still there but we want to salute the men and women that have served our country we're going to play the song that goes with each branch of service and the veterans that are here if you were in one of those branches of service, I want you to stand up. If you were, did not in, be in the service, but you had a friend, a neighbor, a real close friend, and they were in, say, the Marines, I want you to stand up and be proud for that person because they were in the Army and you appreciate it. So we're going to start off with the Marines. Force. 